iPhone 8 Plus is one of the successors to the iPhone 7 Plus, the other being the iPhone X, iPhone 10, which doesn't release until November 3rd. So while I wait another 3, 4 weeks for the X, 10 to arrive, let's take a look and discuss one of the added features of the iPhone 8 slash 8 Plus, wireless charging. Physically speaking, the 7 Plus and 8 Plus are nearly identical on the outside. The noticeable difference here is on the back, the 8 Plus sporting glass instead of metal, which was done to enable wireless charging. A first for an iPhone, but technology that's been around for a while now. With a 2691 mAh battery, I take the iPhone 8 Plus for a 0-100% wireless charging test. While I'm at it, I test a Galaxy S8 that houses a 3000 mAh battery, a bigger capacity battery than the iPhone 8 Plus, but a phone that incorporates fast wireless charging. And if you're not aware, I hate to break it to you, but charging your phone with a wired connection will always be faster than its wireless counterpart. Come on, don't bullshit me. I'm not. You know you're lying. Arnold, I'm not. Bullshit. For this test, I'm using a wireless charger from Utech. I'm guessing it's pronounced Utech, unless it's pronounced Yotech. But yo, I don't know. It's 15 bucks. The one I own uses a micro USB connection, but they sell one now that incorporates USB C, which is what I'd rather own if I had the choice. But I've had this for a while now, and it works just fine. It's also cheaper than the Samsung equivalent, $39 versus $15, and loads cheaper than what Apple's offering on their website. The Mophie and Belkin models are selling both for $60, four times the price of the one I'm using. Since I don't have two identical wireless chargers to test, both the S8 and iPhone 8 Plus were done separately. So I used the same charger, drained both phones down to 0%, and tested until full. I should note when the S8 charges, the charger lights up green, indicating fast charge in use. The iPhone 8 Plus blue, standard charging. But I've heard later this year fast charging will be incorporated in the 8, 8 Plus, via a software update. So we'll retest when that happens. In the first 15 minutes of wireless charging, the Galaxy S8 reaches 10%, the iPhone 8 Plus 8%, and that was more at 16 minutes for the iPhone. I missed the ball here a little, but both comparable. At the 30 minute mark, the S8 increases to 18%, the iPhone 8 Plus 16%, a little behind the S8, but charging at a very comparable speed. Fast forward to one hour. The S8 jumps to 37%, the iPhone 8 Plus 31%, falling a bit behind now from the S8. At 2 hours of wireless charging, the S8 hits 75%, 3 quarters of the way done, the iPhone 8 Plus 61%. And at 2 hours, 48 minutes, and 3 seconds, the S8 wakes up to let me know it's reached 100%. And as it goes back to sleep, the notification light stays green to remind me it's fully charged. At around the same time frame, I check on the iPhone 8 Plus for comparison's sake, and at 2 hours and 50 minutes, my 8 Plus is at 84%. At 3 hours, 87%. At 3 and a half hours, 96%. At 3 hours and 45 minutes, 98%. And somewhere between 3 hours and 50 minutes and 3 hours and 55 minutes, the iPhone 8 Plus tops off at 100%. The S8 finishes over an hour faster. Not to mention, it's 300 milliamp hours more in battery capacity than the 8 Plus. Technically speaking, the S8 charged at a rate of 17.9 milliamp hours, or is it 17.9 milliamps per minute? The iPhone 8 Plus around 11.5 to 11.7 milliamp hours, or milliamps per minute. If you've never used a wireless charger before, it's easy. The benefit here is convenience. You don't have to plug the phone in, you just lay the phone down on the charger and let it do its thing. It gives it that futuristic feel, but not without the cost of a slower charging speed. Well, and the fact that if you need to use your phone, it stops charging once you take it off the base. It is a slower alternative than just plugging a phone in, but if you have 3 hours to kill, or 4 hours to kill depending on which device you own, then more power to you. 